Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to give an in-depth review of my Give Energy 9.5 kilowatt hour battery and 5 kilowatt inverter and also take a look at the functionality that is within the Give Energy app and web portal. Now that I've lived with my Give Energy battery for roughly five months, particularly throughout the winter months as well, I thought it was a good time to discuss the pros and cons of the system that I found and I'll also discuss whether I would recommend the Give Energy equipment to family and friends as well. Now if you want some more information on my solo install, um, please click the video that is shown on the screen now and also linked in the description as well, which talks more about the components of the install. But today we're going to be talking about my inverter, which is a 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter, Gen 1, and my Gen 2 9.5 kilowatt hour Give Energy battery as well. So stay tuned. So I've just moved back into my office where it's a little bit more comfortable. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any experience of any other batteries or battery systems to compare this to. But I feel like after living with the Give Energy equipment for about five months now, I'm in a good place to give an honest review of a real world experience and talk about what's worked and what personally I think can be improved upon. So these views are just my opinions only and I'm by no means an expert, but hopefully you find this useful if you are looking to purchase a battery system for home or if you already have one, hopefully this can provide some new tips that you didn't know before. So at the time of making this video in May 2023, Give Energy offer four different sizes of batteries. That's the 2.6 kilowatt hour, 5.2 kilowatt hour, 8.2 kilowatt hour and 9.5 kilowatt hour, which is what I have. So why did I choose the 9.5? Originally I was quoted for just the 5.2 kilowatt hour battery for my system because I'm a relatively low user of electricity. But I decided to go for the 9.5 kilowatt hour battery instead because I wanted to future proof the home and also allow for a bit of flexibility to really help maximise the return by utilising tariffs such as Octopus Agile and more recently Octopus Flux. And the thinking behind that was if I had the 9.5 it gives me a little bit extra storage that I could potentially use to discharge to the grid at peak times when they're paying good export rates. But then it would also allow for some additional capacity if I decided to purchase a heat pump, electric vehicle, or even potentially get my hot tub back out again when the sun's shining. Overall, I have an expectation that over time my electricity usage will continue to increase. So this was really future proof from that for that reason. Speaking of Octopus tariffs, if you'd like to know more about Octopus Energy and some of their tariffs, check out my other videos which are linked in the description. And if you'd like to make the switch to Octopus Energy, there's a referral link on the screen and in the description now. If you use that, then you get £50 credit added to your account when you join, and I also get £50 as well. Thank you so much to everyone that's used this link so far and joined Octopus Energy. So back to the batteries. I also like the fact that the 9.5 kWh offered 100% depth of discharge, or DOD. And this means you can essentially use the full capacity of the battery for the advertised size. The 2.6 kWh battery and the 5.2 kWh battery only offer 80% depth of discharge, so you're not actually getting the full capacity of the advertised battery size. Although I believe this can be extended to 90% if you speak to Give Energy, but I think this might affect your warranty as well. The 8.2 kWh battery also has 100% depth of discharge as well. If we look at the data sheet for the 9.5 kWh battery, we can see the specs in greater detail. Quite a big battery, it's 800 millimeters high by 242 millimeters deep and 480 millimeters wide and weighing in at 110 kilograms. So quite a heavy battery as well, but I also think it looks really smart and the install looks quite neat on the wall, just like it is here in my garage. The battery uses lithium ion phosphate technology and this technology is generally considered to offer a better lifespan and also be safer than normal lithium ion batteries and the data sheet also states that it does not contain any cobalt and that makes it non-flammable and also 99% recyclable which is good and the battery has an IP grade of IP65 so it has the maximum level of protection possible for dust and solids and is able to withstand low pressure water jets from all directions so for those that don't know IP stands for ingress protection and the first number details the product's ability to protect against the likes of dust and this is really on a scale of 0 to 6 and the second number details the water resistance up to 9 so in this case we've got a protection level of 5 for the water so these batteries can be installed outside but should definitely have some sort of canopy over just to protect them from the worst weathers as you can see again from the data sheet and i've also heard of a few issues to back this up the charging operating temperature range is not to 55 degrees celsius and discharge is minus 10 to 55 degrees celsius so if the outdoor temperature gets down to freezing in some cases the battery may stop charging so somewhere indoors is the ideal location for these batteries if possible as you saw earlier mine are located in the garage which i think if you have the space is a perfect location i've also seen 
seeing others install them in the loft but it can get quite hot in summer up there and it also feels like quite a lot of work to have up there in my opinion as well so i think the garage for me is the perfect location warranty on the data sheet states unlimited cycles slash 10 years and when i mentioned this in the first video that i made about my install and equipment it's caused a little bit of controversy as to what that actually meant so i tried to do a bit more digging on the give energy website and look at the warranty information and find out what this actually means so what that states in the warranty document is when installed and commissioned by an improved installer the warranty will stand to the earliest of these two stipulations either one 10 years from the initial installation date or two a capped energy throughput on the usable capacity of 10 megawatt hours per one kilowatt hour of stored energy. And then it states in brackets as well that the 8.2 kilowatt hour and 9.5 kilowatt hour has an unlimited throughput when used in conjunction with a give energy inverter. So for me and in my install, my understanding of that is because I have it installed with a give energy hybrid inverter, that should be covered for unlimited cycles for 10 years. It sounds like this could vary per installation and the equipment you have installed though, so be sure to check it out for yourself as well. The language does seem a little ambiguous, so if you think I've interpreted that right, let me know in the comments. Or if you think it means something else also, please let me know. I'm unsure what they would class as an approved installer, but I guess that would be someone or a company that is MCS accredited. And there's also a host of other warranty exclusions in the same document as well. So I'll link that in the description. Feel free to take a look and let me know your thoughts as well. A couple of other points relating to the data sheet as well. It states that it can be added to an existing solar PV system without it affecting any government incentives, which I take to mean if you get paid FIT payments, you can actually utilize a battery to potentially use more of the power that you generate yourself. And it also states that the battery can be used without solar panels as a standalone system to allow you to use cleaner electricity during off peak hours, and then save the need to draw the power from the grid during peak times throughout the day when generally the grid uses dirtier electricity generated from the likes of gas and coal, for example. If we move on to have a look at the app, um, just bear in mind that I'm recording this in May 2023, so this is liable to change over time, which I'm sure it will. So some of this information may end up out of date. I would say that the app was one of the main reasons that I went for the Give Energy equipment. Yeah, the visuals on the app make it so easy to use and understand, and you get a clear visual of exactly what's happening in almost real time. And the little electrons that fly around the images on the screen tell you where the electricity is flowing to and from, and from how much. Very clear, very concise, and a nice neat little graphic. In the middle, you have the home and the power that's being consumed, and then around the outside, where that power is coming from, whether that's from the battery, grid, or solar panels. And if you have any Give Energy smart plugs or compatible EV chargers in your home as well, then they will also show up on this visual. So very clear on the power that you're using at any one time. You can see that you have a home and away option, and this will depend on whether you are connected to the same Wi-Fi network that the inverter is on. If you are, then it will connect to the home option and will refresh the data every 10 to 15 seconds. If you're not on the same network, it will use the away option, which draws the data from the cloud and refreshes roughly every five minutes. I think this could be a little better. I think usage every five minutes isn't particularly useful. I'm not really sure why this couldn't be updated more frequently. You can then also click on any of the icons and that will show you the daily stats for each element. Again, my experience of this is that it always seems to be about an hour behind for some reason, whether you're on the home or away setting, yet the cloud interface is generally pretty much up to date. I'll talk more about the cloud interface in a few minutes, but I tend to use this more than the app for checking up to date daily generation and export, as the web app data is just much more real time. If we look at the navigation at the bottom of the app, you can see that this is dominated by a big play button. I really like this as it makes carrying out some of the tasks relating to some parts of the smart tariffs that you may want to do very accessible and very easy to kick off. If you press the play button, you get four options. One is an information button, which gives a very useful guide showing what each option does. There's a battery with a plus option on that will charge the battery from the grid, a battery with a minus sign that discharges a battery to the grid at full power, a pause button that stops a battery from charging or discharging, and a play button which puts the battery back to normal operation. There are also a couple of other setting buttons on this screen on the right hand side towards the top. The top one is where you can configure the different modes of the system. If you are on an off-peak tariff such as Octopus Flux, Octopus Go for example, you can set the times for the off-peak rates and then get the battery to charge to what percentage you would like to charge it to overnight. You can also set this to charge from just solar or both the grid and solar. There's also a discharge mode which suggests you can do the same and set a time period for discharge as well. This would be particularly useful for tariffs such as flux if you wanted to discharge your battery during the 4 to 7 p.m. peak times. However, my experience is when I set this to a time period, 
It doesn't discharge a battery to run the house at all outside of those peak hours and instead draws from the grid. I've looked at the settings on the web app to do this as well and I cannot find a way to automate this other than using something like Home Assistant alongside it. If you know of any way to do this without using Home Assistant, please let me know in the comments. Lastly on the home page is an option to click on the battery settings and this shows the current percentage and if you click on that it takes you to a graph that shows some more detailed information including the current wattage, voltage and battery temperature. The graph at the bottom shows the power usage throughout the day and also the battery percentage as well. And then on the other options on the navigation there is a number of different graphs to view. As standard all data is shown for the selected time period but can be filtered by selecting or deselecting what you want to see. Uh, one shows the peak usage for generation, home consumption, battery power and grid import or export and I really like this as you can quickly see what the system has been doing throughout the day. There are also some other graphs as well where you can see your daily, weekly, monthly, yearly and all time consumption for your system. Again this can be filtered on home consumption, solar generation, battery charge, battery discharge, grid power in and also grid power out. All very useful statistics very easy to understand and to determine how you want to use the system. Overall, very impressive from Give Energy and a great complement to their battery systems. The web app is also very useful and provides even more information than the app. I like the graphics that you get on the homepage, including how your system has helped to save the world, for example, the equivalent number of trees you would have planted based on how much energy you've generated and saved from being, from being grid usage. Again, it's very clear to see how the electricity flows and all this important metrics are there and easy to see as well. I won't go into too much detail about this or it'll be an even longer video but any of the widgets can be maximized to view the items in further detail and you might recognize some of these graphs from my monthly stats videos as well. So I've already discussed some of the pros of the systems now let's move on to some of the downsides that I've found. I've already touched on the automations but most of the automation options are really good within the Give Energy interface and do just work. I have to do uh, very little with them. I think this is one area that could be improved especially with some of the smart tariffs that are now coming along um, and although there's more options in the cloud web app I still could not find anything to make it do the discharge during the peak times for octopus flux for example and schedule it on a daily basis. Number two is bug fixing. There's been a number of people that have had issues with the battery charge randomly jumping up or down as it recalibrates. You may have heard this referred to as an SOC or state of charge issue. This issue feels like it's existed for a long time now. I cannot imagine how frustrating it must be for those users that are seeing this. They spent a lot of money on the home battery system only to find it cannot reliably tell them how full their battery actually is. Thankfully I've never seen this happen to my system but if this is something you are seeing with your given energy system then stay tuned because there might be a resolution coming for this. I've seen it mentioned on some forums that this happens when the installers don't collaborate the battery properly so what's essentially meant to happen during the commissioning of the battery is that it's completely drained to 0% and they say recharge fully up to 100% I've also seen some others say that it's when the battery is not discharged to 4% and increased to 100% on a weekly basis this can sometimes occur as well apparently determining the state of charge in home batteries and also in electric cars as well apparently is uh, quite common the difference is that electric cars sit still for a long time so they have time to auto recalibrate during that time where its own batteries are in use constantly, which makes it a lot more difficult to fix. Thankfully, at long last, as of the 4th of May, Give Energy now appear to have released a firmware fix that resolves this issue. I believe this has been tested extensively with a large user base, but I've also heard of some users still having issues with this. So my advice currently would be, if you don't see any issues with this, give it a few weeks for people to get upgraded and iron out the problems. If you do see the SOC issue, then I would upgrade now and hopefully that resolves the issue for you. The third point is related to the previous issue as well. It does seem to take Give Energy a long time to release both their bug fixes for issues such as the SOC charge and also for the new products as well. The EV charge has been advertised on the website for a long, long time now, but there's still no sign of any stock anywhere and no updates from Give Energy as far as I've seen to suggest that it's coming anytime soon as well. I think Give Energy could do a bit better job with the communications here, being a bit more transparent about the dates for product releases instead of over promising and then under delivering. I have no evidence to back this up, but this is just my theory. I think that the expansion of the industry as a whole has created a lot of problems for Give Energy, including the uh, supply chain issues that they've seen as well throughout COVID. And demand for the products must have increased exponentially over that time as well. I think it's difficult as a growing business to expand that quickly and to keep up with everything. And in general, new product development is very, very hard. So I do have some sympathy with them here. Hopefully they can improve this as the team grows 
going forward. If you want to know more about any of the Give Energy equipment, I would highly recommend joining the Facebook group Give Energy Battery Owners. They have some great information and resources on there, and they also have a team of Give Energy staff that are very, very helpful on there and will answer all your questions. They're very proactive and have been very quick to help people with the SOC issues, giving them direct access. So definitely get yourself on there if you've got a Give Energy battery at home. So in summary, taking everything into consideration, would I recommend Give Energy to family and friends? Absolutely. I know I've beaten up on the bug fixing timelines a little bit there, but, but overall I'm very, very happy with my system. It was installed on December the 19th, 2022 and has performed absolutely flawlessly since it was installed. I haven't had to do any maintenance or any bug fixing on mine whatsoever, it's just worked and it's done everything that I expected of it in terms of reducing my grid usage and offers all the flexibility that I wanted from the extra capacity for the 9.5 kilowatt hour battery. I love the fact that from roughly about February now I've been able to run mostly on solar and the battery power and I think for my usage the 9.5 kilowatt hour battery capacity is absolutely perfect just slightly above my daily usage and I very rarely run out of power during the day. Hopefully this continues. It also gives you enough options to be as hands-on or as hands-off as you want with this. If you want to plug it in and leave it, you can. If you want to have a mess around with the settings and try and optimize it for your usage, then there's enough options in there to do that as well. All in all, I would say it was a great product, well made, great design, and like most of these things these days, with software upgrades and firmware upgrades in future, it should only continue to get better as well. If you have any experience of any of the Give Energy products yourself, let me know in the comments how you're getting on with yours. I'd be very interested to hear. Hopefully this video was useful. If so, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel. Uh, there's lots of useful content coming up around this sort of subject, my solar panels, electric vehicles, and I'm also attending the fully charged show in Harrogate in a couple of weeks as well. So I'll try and get some content for a video or two for that as well. Thank you as always for all of your comments, support and questions. And that's it for now and I'll see you on the next one.